Alright guys, now let's go over the effects panel. And both of these features have been heavily revamped in Lightroom 3. Well actually the grain wasn't available in Lightroom 2. Um, the post crop vignetting has been heavily revamped in Lightroom 3. And it's uh, both these kind of add a, a lot of additional artistic functionality to Lightroom. So let's start with post crop vignetting. Basically what this is, is this is your artistic vignette now. If you guys want to create heavy artistic vignettes, this is where you want to go to do it. And there's different blend modes for these vignettes, so the different styles. One is highlight priority, one is color priority, and one is paint overlay. Now the highlight priority is basically better for images with strong highlights around edges, like you see right here, with a lot of specular highlighting in the water and just really bright skies in general. Color priority is probably better for images that have uh, kind of a lot more dark colors around the edges. But both these modes are, are very, very similar in the way they're going to blend. They're both going to kind of darken the natural colors of the edge of the frame, as opposed to the previous version of Lightroom, which was essentially this paint overlay, which all it did was basically create like this kind of gray, dingy paint overlay, that uh, vignette that kind of really just kind of made images not look very good. So let's show you guys each of these effects. Let's start with the highlight priority and we'll just kind of switch it up. We'll go through the, each of the sliders and then change the uh, blend mode so you guys can see how it affects the, the style. So starting with amount, this is just the overall amount, the strength of the vignette that we're going to add. And now uh, for the purpose of this tutorial to make it very easy to see, we're going to make the amount uh, negative 100. Um, if we go all the way to the other side, it's going to be really white around the edges. This is kind of like that classic uh, kind of 80s portrait look that you see in those frames. Um, so let's go to negative 100. Obviously this is a way too powerful effect, but at least we can see it really clearly. Now from here we have the midpoint adjustment which works the same way as it does in the lens correction vignetting up here. Uh, so it's just going to pull in that midpoint of the mid vignette or we can pull it out straight to the edges and where it's only affecting the little slight edge right there. So let's pull it in just so we see more of it. The roundness slider is going to affect the overall shape of the vignette. So as we go to the left it's going to create kind of a a rectangular shape with rounded off edges, which is going to be really great for creating like some really cool artistic vignetting uh, images in Lightroom. As we go to the right, it's going to round off the, the tops, uh, so basically it's going to round off the sides and then the tops go outside of the frame, so kind of this vertical oval shape. And then back to the middle is just the standard rectangular oval that'll kind of fit the entire image. So let's leave it somewhere around here so we can kind of see the overall effect. We'll pull it in a little bit so we can kind of see a little more square effect. The next option we have is the feather slider, and basically what this does is it, the feather controls how quickly this uh, vignette fades from the, the dark colors to the, the light area, so it's affecting how quickly that gradation is occurring. Now if I reduce that vignette, it's going to happen very quickly and it's going to become a solid edge, which is what you see. It looks like I'm shooting through a weird shaped lens, basically. If I go all the way to the right, it's going to soften it to the point where it doesn't really look like there's a vignette, uh, like a a strong vignette it's just like kind of fades from dark to to brighter in the center. So maybe we'll fade this off to the right a little more just to increase the amount of gradation slightly. The next is this highlight option which is a new option that basically preserves the highlights that are originally in the image. So as I pull this to the right the vignetting that's over these highlight areas is going to be pulled back. So if I keep pulling it to the right basically all the vignette that was over the sky is going to be completely removed until at 100 where it's completely gone. And then what we're left with is basically vignetting over all the areas that are not highlights. So it's another cool option to kind of save the, the sky from darkening to that kind of gray effect where it's blown. All right, so now let's switch our blend mode to one of these other blend modes. So if we switch to color priority, it's kind of a very similar effect. It still affects the overall colors of the image, um, but it does it in a slightly different way. I think probably the better look for, uh, even though this vignette is way too strong, the better look for that this image, because there's so many highlights in this image, is the highlight priority look because it kind of preserves that look of the sky a little bit better. Next we have the paint overlay. This is the classic vignette mode. Whoops, let me undo that. The paint overlay mode creates that kind of gray paint effect that goes, it just kind of flattens the image and, and makes it look kind of dingy. It's, a really, it's an effect that I really don't like, um, but if it's something that you guys like, then then go nuts. All right, guys, so I'm going to reset that post crop vignette, and let's move on to talking about grain. Now, this grain feature is completely new to Lightroom 3, and it allows us to create really cool grain effects in Lightroom without having to, you know, take it into Photoshop or any other third-party editor. But it's really simple how it works. We can add, uh, I'm going to zoom in actually to her skin so we can kind of see. And uh, we'll zoom out a little bit because that's freakishly close. Um, let's go right over here. 
Okay, so I can increase the amount of grain uh, just by increasing this amount, and it's just basically going to increase the overall amount. It's just the strength of grain in the image. Um, and then I can increase or decrease the size of that grain. So if I want to be really fine film grain, I can go off to the left. If I want to be really large film grain, I can go off to the right. The larger that film grain is, the more overall uh, detail we're kind of destroying from the image. And you can have it be at 100 where it's just this huge, chunky film grain. If I take this all the way up to 100, it's going to be massive, massive film grain. So it's kind of a cool effect. Obviously, you wouldn't want to take it that high, but uh, it, it's great for you know black and white images, vintage images, and creating really cool artistic effects. Also, you have the roughness effect, which is just affecting kind of the coarseness of that grain. Uh, so from fine grain and kind of very round-shaped grain to a very coarse, heavy grain off to the right on the 100%. So we're going to have a lot of really cool tutorials talking about vintage uh, effects, and we're going to be using grain as well as the post-crop vignetting. All right, guys, let's move on to the next tutorial.